Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Answers from the Lab, where we share Mayo Clinic knowledge and advancements on the state of testing and science from laboratory leaders and the people who are making it happen behind the scenes. I'm Dr. Bobby Pritt, Interim Chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. With me today is Dr. Bill Maurice, the President and CEO of Mayo Clinic Laboratories. This is our weekly discussion with Dr. Maurice, in which we learn about updates in the field of laboratory medicine and pathology. Hi, Bill. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Bobby, and hello. Hello. Yes, it's an exciting new year. Lots of things going on. We can reflect now on what happened uh, legislatively or what didn't happen at the end of last year and uh, talk a little bit about what's going to happen in this year now. Yeah, yeah. So it was, you know, it was, uh, I think, it's the first time we've had a chance to talk since the end of year legislative package. End of year, of course, being 2022, not 2023, the year <laughs> we're in, uh, passed. There was, um, there was a lot of deal making at the end, uh, or I should say, maybe from what I've heard, an appetite, not so much an appetite for deal making. So it was what, so there was, uh, of the two major uh, bills that had impact on labs, there was, of course, Salsa, which was a permanent fix to to PAMA and the reimbursement cuts of PAMA, and then Ballad. Um, Ballad did start at the end first. Ballad did not pass. Um, it was not introduced as part of the end year legislative package. Um, I have heard that there is continued interest from uh, on the Hill, as they say, to look at Ballad. But the reality is that um, this year was a big year because there was a funding for FDA that it comes every five years that was due. So that tends to be when that funding is due, um, tends to be when we see legislative uh, uh, bills that affect FDA go. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But we also have to wait and see. We don't know yet what the FDA is going to do, because as you and I talked about beforehand, there was a lot of interest all the way up to Commissioner Caleb, who I had a chance to speak with on occasion um, to see something happen. So now we just don't know what will happen. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, for Salsa, I guess, Really, at the end, uh, there was very difficult to get any of the, the uh, I forget exactly what they call it, but essentially healthcare spending uh, for CMS and entitlement spending, that's what it is, passed permanently because there's a, a neutrality they go for where you're going know, to increase spending on something, you decrease spending on something else. So as a result, um, we got a one-year delay that was passed, but not a permanent fix. So that means that that, that issue is still very pressing for all of us. And the clock is already running now, uh, because if you think about it, we don't really have that much time before we'd be looking at uh, at this expiring again. And, you know, there's concern now with the challenges they had even electing a speaker of the House, you know, how how challenging will it be to get legislation through this year? So so it's uh, um, it's interesting. I mean, there was so much energy and it's sort of like uh, it's kind of resolved, but kind of not. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, the take home message I have is that both of them are basically going to be a wait and see situation. Yeah. What's going to happen with future legislation? What's going to happen with the FDA? And and I think that there's still an opportunity that they're going to pursue for um, overseeing lab developed tests. And we're just going to have to now understand what that is without the framework of valid. Yeah, exactly. So and then I think the two most important things are for all of our listeners and watchers on the YouTube channel, I guess, to stay engaged, particularly mm -hmm. with the reimbursement, because we know that there's only a one year delay on the PAMA cuts. So that means um, to, advocacy is gonna be important. I, I know that the Stop cut, Lab Cuts Now effort, actually there were tens of thousands of people that, that participated um, and sent in uh, uh, messages to legislators and it made a difference in, in terms, because actually there were very few even delays that got put into the final um, it was packaged, so that was impactful to stay engaged there. And I suppose, you know, we'll just have to wait and see with the FDA. Um, if it does look like the FDA is going to be proactive in using device regulation, then it might be good for you and I to discuss sometime what's the difference between FDA acting unilaterally and what are the, 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 some of the pros comparatively to a legislative solution. But we'll just have to see on that one. So that's it for now. We'll keep an eye on that and uh, yep. be more to come. Well, what's new in your world? Because you're traveling right now. So there's yeah, so, more coming. Yeah, so it's interesting. I'm at the JP Morgan uh, Healthcare Conference in San Francisco right now uh, as we speak, literally. And uh, and so this is my first day here. 
it's an interesting environment because uh, this is typically where there's a lot of biotech companies, a lot of investors, and a lot of pharma companies. So you get a real read for what is the investment appetite, what kind of things are, uh, are quote, hot in healthcare. Uh, interestingly, diagnostics, which were very much of interest to investors with COVID, uh, they're this kind of cooled a little bit. And there are some companies that are, that are really struggling right now. Uh, particularly in the genomic space, we've heard, you know, as have been in the news. So it'll be interesting where they're, what they're what they looking for there. Um, it just gives you a read for um, for where we'll see activity in healthcare based on where people plan on investing. So it's, uh, it's uh, my first day. We'll kind of see how things go, but uh, it'll be interesting. I think there's going to be a lot still in at-home testing, digital diagnostics, data, uh, platform, so, you know, those will be, I think, some of the, the, the hot topics this year, if you will, um, for investors. And I think they're also hot topics for healthcare as well. Well, they really are. And I was going to ask you about at-home testing because there were some uh, posts on social media that were widely circulating of some at-home tests that are available outside of the U.S. but are not FDA approved or emergency use authorized in the U.S. So we can't get a hold of them. Multiplex tests that'll detect flu, RSV and COVID all at once. And a lot of people are asking, when can I get these? I've had colleagues and friends ask me, where can I buy one of these? Um, I think that there's gonna be that increased push for all the reasons we've talked about. Um, people really enjoy and have gotten used to the ability of being able to do an at-home test, at least for COVID. Yeah, no, I think that is something that's gonna, uh, it'll be interesting again to see where what, who, what companies are attracting investors. Because as you know, there's a lot of, of sort of startups or newer companies in the space of at-home testing. The environment from an investor perspective is a little bit muted because there's a, there's expected recession. You know, that's one of the, the, the financial economic concerns for 2023. But even with that, I, the prevailing thought is that in remote work and, and this kind of blended remote in-person work is probably here to stay. And I think that as much as anything will drive the at-home test because then people want to know Gosh, if I feel sick, um, you know, should I take a test? A lot of times employers might even want evidence of that, or if you have a positive test, give you different um, accommodations for remote work. So yeah, I do think that this idea of remote diagnostics and at-home diagnostics is something that we're gonna see a lot of energy around this year. And this will be the year, I think, that of all the things that we speculated, how things might change for labs with COVID, as COVID gets into the more, I know, and there's still things happening with COVID and variants and a lot of the activity in China, but the reality is I, I think this will be the year that we get a good read as to whether what were the things that we thought were going to happen because of COVID, how many of those things actually come to fruition. Yeah, and how many things that started during COVID will stick around? At home yeah. work and hybrid work, yes, we're still seeing some of that. Although I've also seen people starting to go back to face-to-face -face meetings and rejoicing in the ability to go back face-to-face. -face. But I will also tell you that I've, um, myself personally, I've been receiving invitations to do more virtual presentations more than ever. And I've also even considered converting some invitations I received for face-to-face -to, -face to virtual. When someone wants me to fly across the country to give a one-hour talk and then fly back, I think, well, is that really the best use of time and resources? And of course, the impact it has on our planet. So I don't know. It's We have options now. It'll be interesting, like you said, to see what's going to happen and what we've predicted out of that, what will come true. Yeah, true. sure enough. So um, and also to see how this is again, like of course last year, this was, we were in the midst of the Omicron surge. I remember at the end of 2021, there was a thought mm -hmm. that 2022, we were gonna really be, you know, where we are to now. And then Omicron started, of course, in South Africa, in November. And by this time of year, this conference I'm at was canceled again, even though they have planned to have it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with China. I think there is another new variant, which is more, more transmissible than any previously identified, right? That's out there. Yeah, the XBB.1.5. Uh, the World Health Organization gave a live briefing on January 4th and called it the most uh, infectious to date, but not the deadliest. Um, but we do see it now causing about a third of all the new infections in the U.S. So it's definitely here. And um, and there have been increasing cases in recent weeks. So now people are saying that, well, the CDC and others are warning us that we may need to go back to remasking in large areas. 
I actually never stopped in really large crowds. I always put my mask on. That'll probably yeah. be more commonplace again. I certainly did in the airport. So yeah. here, because the airports are very crowded. But uh, so I guess in summary, going into 2023, we're worried about lab reimbursement. We're worried about, uh, you know, what's going to happen with FDA. And, and also we're still watching COVID. So maybe things aren't changing as much rapidly as we thought they were. I don't know. No, probably not. And we'll keep an eye on the at-home testing market and see where that goes. And I think the message, as we've had before, is for us involved in laboratory medicine, we need to be at the table and we need to know what these tests are and play a role in how they're used in our healthcare systems. Yep, absolutely. And then, then the other thing to watch over the course of the year will be sort of the recovery of healthcare and healthcare workers, and the burnout. I mean, those are things that are still very much... Uh, front of mind concerns, financial performance of healthcare, many health organizations have been really stressed. So all those issues will we'll really still continue to have to talk about and look at and examine and find our way yeah. forward as well. Well, it's a brand new year. Yep, plenty to talk about as always. All right, Val, well, we'll have lots to talk about in the future. Until next time, I'll see you and have a great week. Enjoy the yeah. conference. I will indeed and uh, yeah, talk to you next week. Thank you so much for tuning in to Answers from the Lab. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to tune in every Thursday and every other Tuesday.